I've taken a look at quite a few very cool Spider-Man minifigures, whether they're by Core Figs, Phoenix Customs, MRM Print, but there's one company that has just great printing and detailing that I just haven't taken a look at a Spider-Man by them yet, and that would be Life Brick. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Tom Holland Final Swing Suit by Life Brick. Very excited to take a look at this. The packaging is in a tin that is saran wrap to keep it secure. I'm going to take that off quick. And we'll be able to open it up. Looks like I might have actually had some black wear off on the front of it, but you can see minifigure, get a card on the inside too, and a bunch of accessories. Looks like this is number 61 of their figures that have come out, their Instagram and I believe WhatsApp, 120 out of 145. So a little bit higher than the quantity of some other figures probably, but very excited to check this out. I've been very interested in getting a Life Brick Spider-Man minifigure, but I've been kind of turned off by the prices for the Tobey Maguire as well as the Andrew Garfield ones that they had been putting out. When I saw that they had a final swing one here that was actually a bit more affordable, being under $100, I'm pretty sure, had to jump on it. And looking at it firsthand now, just I really love that shiny metallic blue that they have on the accents on the sides of the suit. That looks amazing and matches what was seen in the movie. Um, it also just has a nice blue when it isn't reflective, like you catch it at the right angle. But just straight on, you can see that there is really nice darker blue accents to give it muscle lines and as well as just seam lines. Getting to the red, there is also a very fine stippling effect across that. And of course, just very clean black lines throughout to give the web pattern. And that really continues all the way around the minifigure, surprisingly, where you get side torso printing, back torso printing, back leg printing, as well as inner leg printing, which continues the web line. And it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's a, probably a little bit easier to translate this into comics, uh, but when you get to the live action, the spacing of the lines needs to be different lengths, especially when you're doing a 3D object like this. Uh, just looking at the back of the mask where there's these huge gaps in between the webs. I don't know if that is accurate to the movie or not. It probably isn't, but when you have to print it, I guess you have to make some decisions creatively on how many lines you want. Um, one thing I noticed is that on the back of the torso, I'm not sure if the spider logo is like centered, centered. feels like it's a little bit to the right. But again, with the darker accent lines here to just give a little bit more detailing, there are just those striped lines on the back of the torso that makes it feel like a flight suit of some sort. And it seems like maybe it continues the web lines down to the more belt area, which on the back of the torso is only on the torso, but getting to the front of it, it does cross over to the legs a little bit, which is nice for these custom minifigures, obviously. The print is seamless versus you get an official minifigure where it's printed like that. It will break up at the belt line. Just seen with this Wolverine that I have, you can see on the torso, it doesn't reach all the way to the bottom. For a lot of the official Spider-Man minifigures though, they kind of get around that by doing all of the sort of printing on the torso. Like you can see here where the belt part just is there. Same thing for the back. Another really great bit of detailing is you can see in the arm, there's a little bit of blue on the inside and moving the arm, there's even more exciting printing on the inside of the arm where you can see that there is a web shooter present printed. A little bit of detailing that'll pretty much be covered up all the time, but it's still there. And that'll also be on the other arm as well. So loving the detailing that we're seeing there. Along with that, you know, fully wrap around printed arms. Always a pleasure to have in the collection. And getting back to the mask, uh, there is, again, the stippling sort of detailing throughout to give a texture and is a 360 printed mask versus minifigure heads usually uh, don't have printing on the side, but they print it all the way around. Getting to the shoulders, you can see too that the alignment is very good. Uh, just getting that black outlining between the red and blue all the way around. And this minifigure is very seamless, uh, even side of the torso, more of those darker metallic blue lines continuing around. I just really love the printing here. Uh, I'm not going to beat around the bush there. I think this is a really great design and translates the suit from the movie very well, obviously being very comic expired, which is, definitely works. Um, one thing that I just remember too with the legs, 
unfortunately the blue doesn't continue all the way along the top of the leg so at a certain point when you're doing posing for photos some red will end up showing if you have the leg back obviously not going to be an issue if you kick it forward but that is something you'll run into i just took a closer look when i had it off the stand and i just noticed there's like some soles on the bottom of his feet so another subtle detail that probably could have been left off and i wouldn't have even noticed but it's there and that's just kind of how they go with these minifigures it seems like i would say the plastic on this mask might be a little bit off where it is a little bit of a lighter red compared to the normal lego red no printed hands uh, which kind of throws off the look with all the web line everywhere else but getting printed hands can go both ways where it's just easier to damage as you're putting accessories in and for a character like spider-man if you want to use webs and such that can be kind of a hindrance and it just sucks when you break your minifigures and with this molded mask, there is also a printed, more Lego styled mask underneath. It does still have the texturing on the red areas on both sides with more black web lines in the side, I mean the back, but no printing on the side, which is what I was kind of talking about earlier. That's kind of interesting because the mask did have the full wraparound. I think the Tobey Maguire and the Andrew Garfield that they made also had that side web printing but probably would have brought up the cost a lot so i guess maybe that's why this minifigure ends up being a bit cheaper and just comparing it to a lego version it is pretty standard to what they're printing so i guess that might be a little bit disappointing to see but i guess it makes sense and with that i'm kind of interested you also get a second head that looks the exact same so i don't know if this was a mistake that i got two of them or if this is like a misprinted one because i do feel like the stippling design on this one might be slightly worse but also maybe this is just a backup just in case you end up scraping some of the ink off as you remove the mask and put it back on but it's kind of nice you can upgrade one of your other tom holland suits since this kind of matches the rest of his suits uh, lens wise and everything but it is strange to have it exactly the same so I don't know what's up with that. There are a couple more accessories, an unmasked head and a removed mask piece. The mask is a really nice part and just clips into the hand like a normal accessory. I just wanted to show off before I put on the head. Uh, you do have that red printing around the neck. Kind of bleeds on the inside, which is fine, um, but no web lines on it or anything. But I think that is kind of nice and makes the transition a little less harsh. Look at that. Uh, facial design not sure if i absolutely love it i don't know if i 100 percent see tom holland there i would say for peter parker in general definitely works you could throw this on any comic suit uh but i feel like i guess i don't remember i think at the end of the movie he was a little bit more beat up so maybe having a more distinct look would be better i'm sure this is just a reused peter parker head from one of the other tom holland figures they might have made at some point hair wise though i do like the mold here it is a little bit more matte than lego plastic uh, which for hair can kind of go both ways where the sheen and whatever between people could be different i think the sort of comb over looks nice texturing is very good on that uh, and then getting back to the mask you can see that there is actually an implied hole where he would pull it over his head and just adjusting the focus you can see the lenses as well you can see it does have printed black and white on there None of the web lines are printed, but they are molded, so they are still present on the design. And of course, you could flip it the other way, but I feel like the way that it's hanging or just molded, it does make more sense to hold it with the lenses kind of facing downwards. But obviously, put it in either hand. It's a very fun accessory and is going to be very fun for photos, of course. I feel like you could do Spider-Man no more with this type of piece and just goes to enhance this minifigure a little bit more with already having great printing, having an extra unmasked head, custom hairpiece, and this very cool mask definitely adds to the value here. But with that being said, let's go to the comparisons and the final. Every time it gets to this section of a Spider-Man review, I always forget how many different options I have to compare with. Companies are getting really good at making their custom Spider-Man minifigures, just putting out all the different movie versions, all the different comic versions, and just upping themselves every time with the quality and the amount of printing that they're able to get. I mean, just look at these official Spider-Man minifigures even where they are very close. Obviously, they're missing some of those extra little bits of detail that they just don't typically do on all their minifigures. But sometimes they do do like arm printing where if they added that, I'd really think those would be up another level in like a tier list. But 
this is a great attempt at this minifigure. I'm pretty sure the only one that's been on my radar for this design is the Phoenix one that obviously has been in uh, development hell for years now. Uh, and even that one would be based more on renders and concept art stuff and not necessarily able to see close images of the suit like this one was since it is a bit more recent. And I looked at the listing for the hot toy that is based on this design and it is pretty much spot on. And I'm pretty sure that's where they got the facial expression for the Peter Parker head as well as the mask is also an accessory of that figure. So it's basically a mini hot toys. And you could say that all about a lot of these different premium custom minifigures, but this one, especially with the level of detailing where it wraps around everywhere, uh, you get the very small detailing too with things like the printed web shooters. Um, and it's just a really premium product. And it's kind of fun to go down some memory lane with some older Tom Holland suits, some of them being custom like this Phoenix Customs first suit, as well as just the official one here, which is probably one of the better official Spider-Man minifigures being that one based on his Civil War and I think homecoming look. Um, but there are some other really great designs too that aren't necessarily live action, like the Miles Morales and the Peter B. Parker minifigures here. Just the amount of detailing you get on a minifigure these days is crazy with the amount of different texture, like stippling dots that you can get on a minifigure. Um, and just taking basically comic drawings and putting them into 3D form is always very impressive to me, even if it is video games, movies, uh, they're just doing a really great job of making out these figures and characters. Obviously, I think the Spider-Man uh, icon is <laughs> definitely there. It, the red and blue just looks great together, and getting all these different designs in minifigure form has been very fun, and being able to compare them like this is also just a treat. Uh, just seeing companies go from figure one to the 10th one, just seeing improvements all of the time, all over the place. And while this is my first Lightbrick Spider-Man minifigure, it isn't my first Lightbrick minifigure, and I've been very impressed with their quality. Uh, I haven't experienced any issues that I've seen from other people, really, um, so I've been lucky, maybe. Um, and I think even for this one, the extra accessories give it a little bit of oomph that would put it against competitors, and I'm not always a molded mask person. I think this might be my only minifigure with a molded mask like this, especially Spider-Man, but I think it's kind of cool. Adds a little bit of extra flavor to it and just makes it a little bit more unique, which is always appreciated too. I'm very happy with this one, but let me know what you think in the comments. If you want to see more custom LEGO Spider-Man reviews or custom Marvel videos overall, check out all the videos on my channel. I have been Brick Radioff, and I'll see you in the next video.